All right, let's do Shane Gillis. Uh, from what I understand, Shane Gillis went on SNL and it was a bit of a flop. Some people are saying it was a bit of a flop because everyone's too woke to appreciate good comedy. Other people are saying that it was a flop because Shane Gillis wasn't very good at it. Now, as a person who is... Uh, who has appreciated some of his specials or at least parts of his specials. I, I, I think that Shane Gillis is the, is a funny guy. I think that he's a funny dude and I want to know what happened. Most of you probably have no idea who I am. Uh, I was actually, I was fired from this show. Don't look that up, please. If you don't know who I am. Seeing Shane Gillis on SNL was a double win for us bad boys. We got to hear super raunchy words on TV and stay up crazy late. Staying up past your bedtime and watching Edgelord is peak middle school energy. I'm 38. <laughs> my mom asked me this a lot and it's kind of an intense question my mom asked me she's like when did we stop being best friends and she's right we used to be best friends you remember that when you were a little boy and you like you loved your mom and you thought she was the cool you remember when you were gay <laughs> you remember when you i think he's nervous he should have never addressed that like the crowd is not laughing especially because they are laughing but i don't know did they add the laugh track afterwards or something you were just a gay little boy <laughs> every little boy is even he knew The worst part about the whole Shane Gillis situation is that, like, when you do have bits in your stand-up, the Nick Mullen phenomena. If you have bits and pieces in your stand-up that are, like, even relatively right-wing or relatively reactionary, it doesn't matter what your personal politics are. You are going to develop an audience that's, like, either A, not getting the fucking joke and just like that you're being uh, edgy. And, and you inevitably become like a freak magnet. And one of the greatest examples of this is like the type of dude who goes on fucking, uh, the type of dude who goes on Twitter to be like, you did not sufficiently react to my favorite comedian, especially when it's like most likely a thing you already heard already. Like you didn't sufficiently react to my favorite comedian. Like you're just a freak Lord, brother. My mom asked me when we stopped being best friends and I don't, I don't have the heart to tell her because like most men, I know exactly when me and my mom stopped being friends. It was, uh, it was the first time I whacked off. <laughs> Before that, you're like, oh, where's my mom? I love my mom. She's so cool. One nut. You're like, when's that bitch going to leave the house? <laughs> I have so much business to attend to. They added last because it was so quiet live. That's why like, that's why he's like, all right, all right. Oh, they added a laugh track after the fact. Oh, that's so devastating. I'm like, why is he fucking acting like he's bombing? It seems like he's killing the room. The the thing is like, I mean, I don't think those bits are that bad. What the fuck? I watched it live. Well, then if they, if, if he, if he was getting sufficient laughter, why the fuck is he acting like he's bombing? You I don't tell by looking at me. Something doesn't make sense. I do have family members with Down syndrome. <laughs> it almost got me. I, I dodged it, but it nicked me. It nicked me. <laughs> It's funny. it's funny. Look, I don't have any material that can be on TV, all right? <laughs> I'm trying my best. Also, this place is extremely well lit. I can see everyone not enjoying it. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, just the most nervous I've ever been. Don't clap now. Shut up. <laughs> no, I talk about, I brought up Down syndrome. You, got, you can always tell who's never been around Down syndrome when you bring it up. Like, if I tell people, if I'm like, yeah, I have family members with Down syndrome, people that have never been around it are always like, oh. Like, it's like it's the end of the world. Like, oh, are they okay? Are they doing it? It's like, they're doing better than everybody I know. <laughs> they're the only ones having a good time pretty consistently. They're not worried about the election. <laughs> They're having a good time. My niece has Down syndrome, and uh, I thought that was going to get a bigger laugh. Uh, <laughs> I thought we were allowed that fun here. I mean, this is weak stuff, man. No, it's not. This is like a lot of this stuff is directly from his fucking, uh, directly from his special, the Down syndrome stuff. It's actually pretty good, I, I think. It's just maybe not the best crowd for it, or maybe he's just like too self conscious. I remember watching, I remember watching it the first time and it was like actually pretty good also you can't really go to snl and do stand-up it's a place where jokes go to die you know what i mean it's crazy and then your family gets like too proud like now every single day in my family's group text it's just pictures of my niece and every day somebody else in my family comments she looks exactly like uncle shane <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, i see it a little <laughs> and there's no denying it she does she looks like me with bangs there were live laughs i think we have a lot of people waiting for him and wanting him to bomb the daily beast had a full article up about his bombing monologue about 50 minutes after it finished which feels a little too fast Almost like it was like pre-written or something. He did great for SNL and he powered through. Yeah, I don't think this is as bad as people made it seem on Twitter. I think people were just like, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, he was perfectly fine. As far as like comedy goes in a fucking opening monologue, it's actually a funny opening monologue. I even laughed one time. I don't think I can't remember the last time I laughed at an SNL opening monologue at all. The opening monologue is like always so ugh.